Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be giving you a gameplay overview of the Vengeance, which is the tank Demon Hunter. This is an interesting enough spec in that it's a very Demon hunter i I'll get onto that in a second. And uh, to do that, I'll basically be going over its core abilities, then all of its abilities, and then I will be covering its talents and finally the artifact weapon. However, most of the artifact weapon is not yet implemented. Also, this is one of the kind of freshest uh, specs that, that's really here. Blizzard themselves have said that everything is very much in iteration at the minute for this spec. This is to give you a rough idea of what they're thinking about now. So if you hear me be negative about this, yes, it's negative because it's feedback. Feedback that is meant to inform whatever kind of change Blizzard want to do or, you know, help them make a better decision. People get salty over, like, negative stuff said during an alpha. The whole point of an alpha, and I'm saying this from a development perspective, is uh, that that's when you need to get the feedback in. Anyway, let's get into the actual video. So, what is your resource? Your resource is pain. And you also generate pain via Fellblade, which basically does 16,000 fire damage and generates 20 pain, and it's got a 9 second cooldown. However, something does have an interaction with Fellblade, and that is Shear. So Shear is something that you can spam. Every time you do it, it will do about 9,000 physical damage, and more importantly, reduce the cooldown of Fellblade by 1 second. So if I run into combat here, you can see if I do a Fellblade, now when I do Shears, they will be decreasing the cooldown of Fellblade, which is pretty darn handy. I'm now at the stage where I've got 40 pain. What can I spend 40 pain on? Good thing you asked. Soul Cleave. It costs 40 pain, it's got an 8 yard range, a vicious strike that deals um, about 19,000 damage to all enemies in front of you, and it severs 3 soul, target, uh, soul fragments even from the target, healing you for 5% of your maximum health each. Basically, this does a bunch of damage in a cone and gives you a 15% heal. That sounds like a whole bunch of abilities just rolled into one really, like, super powerful ability. So, if I just get a little bit more pain here, um, there we go. That should be enough for us to use this ability. So, if I hit this, you can see I do a bit of a cleave, and I'm generating a whole bunch of health. So, that's what's going on with that. It's, uh, it's okay. We've then got Demon Spikes. This is your active mitigation. It costs 10 pain to use. You surge with fell power, increasing your parry chance by 20% and reducing physical damage taken by 30% for 6 seconds. That isn't magical damage though, so you're still going to take a lot of magical damage even if that active mitigation is up. So let's just go over all of the abilities. That's kind of your core. We've got a few other ones though. So a good one to start off with because it's really commonly used is actually Immolation Aura. This is a 10 second cooldown. You engulf yourself in flames. This instantly does 5,000 damage to nearby enemies and then does about one and a half thousand damage per second for six seconds. If you're attacking a whole bunch of uh, attacking a whole bunch of mobs, this will be very good. It's basically kind of like your equivalent of, say, consecration. Anyway, let's go through everything. So, consume magic, twenty second cooldown. This is an interrupt which locks your opponent out of whatever school of magic that you interrupted for three seconds. I've already covered demon spikes. Already covered fell blade. We've got Fiery Brand. This is a 30-yard range, one-minute cooldown. You brand your target with a burning symbol, instantly doing about 10,000 damage, fire damage, and reducing the damage they do to you by 40% for 8 seconds. So while you may think, oh, that's a damaging ability, well, it's actually, more importantly, a defensive ability. We've got Gateway, the Fellhammer, which will just teleport you back to the Class Order Hall. We've got Glide, which is this, lets you glide, which is kind of handy. Immolation Aura that I've already covered. Then Infernal Strike, so 40 yard range, 15 second cooldown. You leap to a target location, and when you slam down, you do a bunch of damage to all enemies within 6 yards. It's got quite a large um, range, and in comparison to Heroic Leap, it's got a far, far le um, smaller cooldown, and it also has 2 charges. So, you are really getting a lot of maneuverability here. Metamorphosis is a bit less cool for these guys, actually. So, it's a 3-minute cooldown, and you transform into a demon form for 10 seconds, increasing your current and maximum health by 30%. It also generates 10 pain every 1 second, which means that you'll be able to soul cleave every 4 seconds, so you'll be able to generate quite a bit of your health back. We've got Shear that I've already covered. Then, Sigil of Chains. This is a 2-minute cooldown, 30-yard range. You place a Sigil of Chains at a target location that activates after 2 seconds. All enemies affected by the Sigil are pulled into its center and are snared, reducing 
uh, movement speed by 70% for six seconds. So if I do one of these, it's kind of like a, a shitty ranged Gorfiend's Grasp, I suppose. We've got Sigil of Flame. You place a Sigil of Flame at a target location. It activates after two seconds, and it does a whole bunch of damage, about 8,000 immediately, and then 12,000 over nine seconds. So if I do that here, it will then explode, and boom, everyone has got a dot on them. Very exciting. Let's move on to Sigil of Silence. You place a Sigil of Silence at a target location. It blows up after two seconds, silencing everyone. I'm not 100% sure how useful that is, because surely a silence is something that, you know, you'll want to use reactively, so you'll just be using Consume Magic, but uh, whatever, that's what that is. We've got Soul Cleave, which I've already covered. Spectral Sight lets you see through walls, see enemies, see through stealth, different things like that. There's Throw Glaive, 30-yard range. It uh, basically allows you to throw a glaive, doing very light damage, and it can ricochet to two enemies within 10 yards. We then have Torment, 30-yard range, 8-second cooldown, and it will taunt the target. Other than that, we've just got a few passives. So Demonic Wards, your tattoos, will reduce magical damage taken by 30% and increase stamina by 20%. Also reduces the chance you'll be critically hit by 6% and reduces the chance for attacks to be parried by 3%. We then got Double Jump, which, of course, is that. And finally, Shattered Souls. Basically, whenever you kill an enemy, they drop a Soul Fragment. Running into a Soul Fragment will give you 5% of your maximum health back. If it's a Soul Fragment from a Demon, you will deal 20% increased damage for 5 seconds. And that's pretty much that. I suppose I'll go over the talents, though. So, Abyssal Strike, Infernal Strike, which is this, will... Um, its range first is increased by 10 yards, and it generates 20 pain if it damages at least one target. So that's quite useful. We've got Speed Demon, so Fell Blade will basically uh, charge you to your target up to 15 yards away. So if I go over here and use Fell Blade, I will actually charge into it. Pretty damn cool. And then finally, Soul Flare. Your auto attacks have a chance to spawn a Soul Fragment. Pretty simple, but that's going to be giving you more life in, in a fight, which could be useful. We then have Antagonizing Flames. Increase the damage and radius of your Immolation Aura by 100%. If you're going to be doing loads of AoE tanking, that'll be a very good bet. We've then got Blade Turning. This causes parrying to generate four pain. I have went for that because I just want there to be more, um, more resources for me to use because generally I've been using this in a kind of regular questing context. Um, this is just to give you a quick look overall. I know it's a tanking spec. I should probably be in a dungeon for this, but... You guys all get what these mechanics are. They're very simple, and I'm going to hold off on my full testing until this is like 100% implemented um, as opposed to its current state. This is just to give you an idea. Then we've got Feast of Souls. Soul Fragments heal you for an additional 6,000 over 6 seconds. On to the next tier, Burning Alive. Every 2 seconds, your Fiery Brand deals 401 fire damage and spreads from its primary target to a new enemy. Quite handy, and again, something that'll be very good for your AoE situations. We then have Pain Tolerance. You generate 4 pain every second when you are below 20 pain. I go for that because, again, I like having more resources to play with. And certainly that's useful with Demon Spikes costing 10 pain to use and with it being your active mitigation. We then have Violent Sigils. Whenever a sigil affects an enemy, you've got a chance to spawn a Soul Fragment. Pretty simple. We move on to Blades of Anguish. Sheer has a chance to immediately reset the cooldown of Fellblade. That will definitely increase the pace of gameplay with the spec and the amount of available pain that you'll have to use since Soul Cleave, or sorry, since uh, Fellblade will be generating 20 pain uh, a pop, which is quite a lot. Two of those equals one Soul Cleave, which is very good. We move on to Quicken Sigils. All sigils are now targeted at your location and they activate one second faster. Also, their cooldown was reduced by 20%, so you trade in the ability to target them wherever you want for them just applying at your feet activating faster, and having a slower cooldown. So, depending on your situation, that will be a very good increase. We then got Soul Branding. This increases your leech by 100% when meta is activated. This basically means you'll be doing a lot more self-healing, while in Metamorphosis, pretty darn simple. And one thing you'll really notice is I think all of these are passive. They're really, really doing a lot of passive effects for these talents, which for me is kind of sad because I want more buttons. Though speaking of more buttons, the level 106 tier does contain some, uh, some buttons. So we've got Nemesis. This is a 50-yard range, 2-minute cooldown. Increases the damage you inflict against a target by 10% for 2 minutes. If the target is killed, 
you will inflict 10% additional damage against all creature types matching that original one for the remaining duration. So, if you use this against a humanoid, you will be doing 10% more damage against humanoids. If you then kill that humanoid, you will then be doing 20% more damage against humanoids. This, I guess, will be useful depending on the situation and what enemy types are going to be thrown at you. We've then got Sigil of Mastery, 1 minute cooldown, 30 yard range. This places a Sigil of Mastery at the target location that activates after 2 seconds. This causes all enemies affected by the Sigil to cower in fear, and uh, basically they're, they're um, disorientated for 10 seconds. Um, I guess that's useful in, in PvP and just CC situations. And finally, we've got Soulmate, 40 yard range, 2 minute cooldown. You mark a friendly target as your Soulmate for 15 seconds. Whenever you consume a Soul Fragment, you get your 5% health and they will get 3% of their max health back. And that's basically it. We've Oh, there is Dark Overlord, though it's not yet implemented. This is a 3 minute cooldown. You summon 3 elite troops to heal and uh, attack your enemies. Uh, last for 20 seconds. Not super exciting. Uh, the current active ability from my artifact weapon is Demon Rage, reduces all damage taken by 20%. Um, how long does it last for? 8 seconds, 7 seconds, but that doesn't seem like something's implemented yet. We've then got the um, Alrachi Warblades themselves, so when you use Soul Cleave, the Warblades have a chance to unleash a torrent of a thousand souls, doing a whole bunch of fire damage to all enemies within 6 yards, and healing you for 20% of your health over 10 seconds. However... You know, this is going to be getting you back up on your feet and doing a nice little bit of damage. It's only a chance when you use Soul Cleave. So it's not going to be like a solid bet that you can really play around. I mean, this will be nice when it happens, but it's not really going to be a core part of your strategy unless there's a way for this to happen more. Perhaps we would need a more detailed tooltip to really be able to work that out. If we right click on it, though, you can see most of the artifact isn't actually mapped out yet. And the only major effect here that we've got is Painbringer, which causes Soul Cleave to extend the duration of Metamorphosis and Immolation Aura by two seconds. Of course, you'll probably only be using one or two Soul Cleaves during any one of those, so it's not really that massive. So, what's the gameplay like? Well, most of it's just going to involve running in, using Fellblade on cooldown, because that is your biggest generator of your most important resource. And as soon as you hit, like, 40... You want to stay there. You don't want to spam this. You know, you'll want to build up a bank of pain and, uh, you know, be very careful with it. So right now I am at 80 pain, which means, you know, I could like double spam my soul cleaves, but, you know, that, that would completely resource starve me. Remember, this is a tank, so you don't want to play it ideally. Well, you don't necessarily want to play this like it's a DPS character. You want to be hovering at a high enough amount of pain so that you can do a soul cleave in a clutch situation to pretty much instantly get 15% of your health back and be doing, say, a Demon Spike, which costs 10 pain. So Demon Spike costs 10 and then Soul Cleave costs 40. So you always want to have 50 pain sitting in the back burner in case you need to quickly hit buttons to react to whatever situation the game throws at you. Other than that, you know, you'll be using Throw Glaive to pull enemies. You will be putting down... Um, well, you'll be, you know, using Fiery Brand as a defensive. You'll be putting this down to um, hopefully damage a bunch of enemies and put a dot on them. You'll be using your Immolation Aura to help just, you know, maintain aggro on multiple enemies. But other than that, it's it's pretty simple, you know. A lot of specs would say they'd have their main nuke ability, which is single target, and then maybe they'd have their, you know, th there's like a single target ability and then there's a AoE ability. So an example would be, you know, like multi-shot on a hunter. Well, or, you know, whatever, for whatever spec. In this Soul Cleave, like, it does so much. This is a heal, this is your main damaging ability, and uh, it also is a frontal cleave. They've really rolled a lot into this one button, and, you know, I've got to wonder that at the very base of things, you've got three buttons which really have an interactivity between them. All the other things are kind of extended toolkit that don't particularly have much interplay with, uh, with your main resources. Like, Pain is this resource that really is quite dull. It would be more interesting if it was more than just use Fellblade all the time. That's pretty much all that Pain boils down to. So right now, it's a very, very simple spec, though they do need to add more mechanics to it, so we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt. However, based on the Havoc Demon Hunter, it does seem like they want Demon Hunters to be, well, 
one of the most simple uh, things in the game. And a lot of people in the last video were, you know, saying, ha, you play a uh, marksmanship hunter and you're calling this demon hunter easy. Yeah, I know exactly. If anything, that should show you how bloody easy the demon hunter is. They really are trying to make this a very accessible spec. Whether that's a good idea, whether it's not, um, you know, I've got to worry that perhaps this is them trying to make accessibility um, over good game design in that they want to grab people back with Legion. What I would worry about with the Demon Hunter is, you know, you're going to have a while of it being really shiny, really new, and just really cool and exciting, but then people are going to get tired of it because there doesn't seem to be a lot of depth, and I have been playing my Venge or my Havoc Demon Hunter, which is the DPS one, which is quite a bit more fleshed out as a spec. I've been playing it a little bit more, and it still suffers from all the problems that it suffered from during, uh, you know, the, the last gameplay video that I did on it. So, yeah, bit of a funny situation. I hope they add more depth, more mechanics, and more interplay. I'd say they've got a decent enough, uh, you know, core here to expand on. I just hope they expand on it, and more importantly, expand on it in ways that are modifying this pain resource, that are changing the interplay between these three main buttons. Stuff that's really cool and interesting. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.